Okay, um, I think we've still got more people joining the webinar, but I think we'll make a start and um, they can catch us up. Um, so my name is Jonathan Owen and I'm a solutions architect with Wolf Vision uh, based in the UK. Um, and today I'm going to start our first uh, webinar as part of Wolf Vision's new webinar series. Um, I'm joined by Julian Bussell from the UK, who's going to be uh, helping me with the webinar, uh, answering some of your questions through the Q&A feature of Zoom webinar. Um, and we'll take some time at the end to kind of summarise some of those questions. Today's webinar is really just a, an introduction to the SignApp family. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of the four SignApp products in our range, highlight some of the key features um, of SignApp and what we can offer. I'll also talk about vSolution Matrix, our active learning solution, um, and how that, that's being used in a range of different environments. Um, we'll also look at some new features that are going to be released uh, later this year as part of our summer release. Um, and also, um, one second, let me just get rid of this. Um, yeah, and finally talk about our new um, sign up associate program, which is a new training and accreditation program uh, for our customers that we'll be launching next week. Um, the response to our first web, webinar has been overwhelming, so we've had 450 people register, um, which is a great response, and that's from all over the world. Um, so thank you all for taking the time to join us today, and I hope you find it useful. Over the coming weeks and months, we're going to be running a series of webinars focusing on different sectors, different product groups, um, which we hope you'll find useful. And if you've got any suggestions for webinars that you'd like to see in the future, then please get in touch. So I'll make a start, so I'll just um, share my presentation. Okay, so let's uh, make a start. So our vSolution sign-up range um, started approximately five years ago. Um, um, with the original sign app, which was designed as an all-in-one room solution, um, which offered uh, wireless collaboration at its core and a range of other features. Since then, the product range has grown and we've added three more distinct products to the sign app family. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about some of those features today. So at the core of all four of our sign-up products um, is our wireless uh, collaboration and screencasting functionality. Uh, the key features with that, um, we don't need any cables, obviously being wireless, um, there's no apps required to install, um, and no dongles or buttons need to be added to the device in order to share. So it's a really clean workflow for users or guest speakers coming into a meeting space or teaching space um, to connect wirelessly um, and share their content. We try and remove as many barriers as, as possible about using this technology uh, and by using the native mirroring protocols, um, we can achieve that. So in terms of functionality, we support all the three main uh, native mirroring protocols um, from Apple, uh, Windows, Android. Um, and we're just going to kind of summarize some of the features of each of those now. So first of all, Miracast. Um, many of you are probably using Miracast natively uh, on your Windows 10 or higher devices. Um, the key thing with uh, Miracast is that it works natively. Um, and the big thing that surprises customers when I go out and do demos, um, before we've even configured a sign-up device on their network, we can simply establish a direct Miracast connection using the Windows um, and K key. Um, that always comes as a surprise, um, and that's establishing a Wi-Fi direct connection between the two devices. So that's really important in um, environments where you've got a challenging network configuration, um, and it gives users the confidence to walk into a space um, and use the Windows key and select their um, wireless display device. Uh, we also support MS Mice if the um, sign-up device is configured on your network, which is um, really powerful. We can also support four parallel sessions um, on the device. Um, again, this needs to work on Windows 10 or higher. If you've got legacy devices that are using Windows 7 or Windows 8 um, machines, then we have an application that can be installed separately. Um, 
but Miracast is certainly um, very popular with our customers. The other one is Apple AirPlay, so many of you will be using this at home um, and familiar with how to use it. Um, so this obviously works on uh, MacBooks and iOS devices. And again, it's a native mirroring protocol. So there's no additional training required, especially if those users are, are familiar from using it at home. Thirdly, we have Chromecast. So built into all Chrome browsers is the ability to um, share content wirelessly also compatible with Android devices. And lastly, we have vSolution Cast. So vSolution Cast is our dedicated application, which can be installed um, on a Windows 7 or 8 or higher machine from Windows. Uh, we support up to 4K mirroring. It can be run from a USB drive without any admin rights. So if you've got certain customer groups or end users um, that don't have modern devices, then you've always got an option to fall back on. Uh, we also offer touchback functionality as we do with Miracast, uh, which is really useful if you're using a touchscreen large format display connected through to your um, laptop, either running vSolution Cast or Miracast, and you can control the device. So in terms of devices, um, I'm gonna run a quick poll now um, just to see uh, what you and your customers are, are using. I thought it might be quite helpful. So if you could all answer the poll, that'd be great. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay. Okay, lots of votes coming in. Okay, I'll stop that there, okay. So I'll share those results with you because it's quite interesting. Um, so the vast majority of those that have voted, uh, voted for Microsoft. So we've certainly seen a huge increase in uh, Microsoft users are taking advantage of Miracast. Also we've got Apple users on there, small number of Chromebook users. Um, we certainly see Chromebooks being used uh, regularly in certain applications in certain areas. Um, at certain education institutes. Obviously, mobile devices are, are quite high there as well. Um, in terms of our development and our back end, um, we aim to kind of serve all those native mirroring protocols um, without the need for any additional app. It just removes all barriers and people that are far more familiar. Okay, that's useful. Thanks for that. Okay, let's see the next one. Okay, so in terms of our sign up family, so it's grown quite a lot over the last few years. Um, we have the our original sign up over here on the right hand side um, of the slide. Um, and since then we've we brought in a series of products with different functionality. Um, so I'll walk you through each of those products. Um, I won't go through every feature because we've got detailed information on our website, um, but it'd be helpful if I just talk through some of the key attributes. So Sign Up Pure um, it is our, um, our cheapest product at the um, bottom of our product range. It offers all the core mirroring functionality that's um, built into all of our Sign Up products. So all of the native mirroring protocols I spoke about earlier. Um, we launched this um, just over a year ago at ISC uh, 2019 in Amsterdam, and it's proved extremely popular in both the corporate and education sectors. So we've got lots of universities standardizing um, on this hardware now within their existing installations or as part of a standalone install in the huddle space. Um, and we've seen some um, huge interest within the corporate sector. So big brands such as Coca-Cola, Toyota and Red Bull are all adopting Sign Up Pure as their, um, their standard mirroring option in their meeting spaces. This year at ISC, so we announced um, Sign up pure in a slightly different form factor. So, with our relationship with Intel, we're now able to offer the sign up pure as an SDM module slotting card. Um, Panasonic are the first to launch their range of SQ1 series displays, um, and you can purchase the sign up pure SDM module directly from Panasonic as an accessory. The advantage being you can slot that directly into the display, it takes power from the display um, and offers a really clean installation. 
um, and a slightly different alternative to um, separate hardware. Just to be clear, this is only available on the sign up pure. In terms of connectivity options, I won't go through every, every detail. We've got diagrams available on the website. We're also recording the webinar as well, so you can recap on some of these slides. Um, sign up core has got a single LAN connection. It's also got a dedicated uh, Wi-Fi access point built in, so you can connect to two different networks. So for example, you can connect to your guest network um, a link also through to your internal network to offer different users, different levels of connectivity. One of the key features uh, we offer is Bluetooth device discovery. Now, um, if you've got a network where Bonjour or MDNS is disabled, it can be difficult to integrate uh, wireless collaboration solutions. With this feature enabled on the sign up pure, it allows you to um, discover locally within uh, from the Bluetooth connection um, and implement um, our solution in more challenging environments. Um, again, this is one of those features that's very popular, certainly in universities where they're looking at large deployments um, and they need that level of flexibility. We offer a range of different network configuration options and we've got detailed um, user guides available on our website that you can share with your network teams. Um, this is a really useful feature if you just need to circumvent some of the challenges you may face implementing on a network. Okay, so next up we've got Sign Up Pure Pro. So this launched at um, ISC 2020. So this is taking the Sign Up Pure in exactly the same form factor, um, but we're adding in some features from further up the Sign Up range. So notably, um, it's got a built-in uh, whiteboard with annotation. Um, you can play files directly uh, from the Sign Up Pure Pro itself without any device at all. So supporting BYOD and no device. Um, it's got a built-in Chromium web browser and support for Zoom and WebRTC web conferencing. You can also take an IP stream into the unit from a webcam or a visualizer or another device over the network. Um, very small form factor, easy to integrate behind the screen or within a lectern as part of a, a larger installation. Um, standout features for this product, certainly Zoom and WebRTC at the moment are proving very popular. Um, I'll run through shortly how we manage those connections and how easy it is to launch a Zoom meeting from within our mobile app. So again, connectivity options. Hardware-wise, it's exactly the same as the, um, the sign-up, but obviously with the additional functionality that comes with uh, WebRTC and Zoom support, you've got the ability to add in a USB webcam um, and use it as a standalone device. You can also connect to a touchscreen display and use the annotation and whiteboarding functionality. Um, you can also connect a visualizer via USB and then control via the touchscreen interface. Some of the additional features that come with the Pure Pro and the Sign Up Core, I'll just run through those very quickly. So we've got an integrated web browser, um, which is a Chrome browser. Um, so again, a user can come into the space, um, launch a browser um, without any device connected at all. We've got whiteboarding and annotation. Um, so a standard whiteboard you can launch with different colors and different pen sizes. Uh, you can also annotate over any content that's on screen. So for example, if you're bringing in a network stream um, or you're mirroring your iPad or other device, you can annotate as a top layer over everything else. So that's quite useful if you want to gesture or point out content um, during a presentation. Um, you've got the option to have quick annotation so you can um, quickly annotate at the top of the screen and that will fade away after a set time period. So for after three seconds, you can carry on with your presentation and those annotations will disappear. Also have the ability to um, use the annotation functionality remotely and invite remote users into a session um, to anno annotate collaboratively, um, which is really interesting. A document and media player. So um, built in, you can run all your standard applications, uh, office documents, for example, JPEG images and um, launch those directly um, from the unit, either by USB or from your cloud storage. Um, again, removing the need to always bring a device with you. Um, 
We fully appreciate the value of bringing your own device, but there are circumstances where you need to launch content directly from the unit itself. So here's a list of the uh, cloud services that we support, kind of notable ones on there, obviously OneDrive, for example, Google Drive, Dropbox. Um, so if you've got an existing cloud service within your organization, you can link into there, <coughs> excuse me, and access those files directly. You can also connect to the USB stick um, or use the onboard memory. So we also offer an optional feature pack for Office 365, which can be added to the Sign Up Pure Pro, Sign Up Core, and Main Sign Up. Um, this gives you access to all of your standard Office 365 applications, um, and notably Microsoft Teams going forward, which I'll talk about in a few slides time. Um, this means you can uh, work in your office on documents or presentations, walk into the space and launch a presentation directly from the sign up device. And there's also our B Solution meeting feature back. So you can uh, enable it on the device and schedule the meeting space through Outlook. Um, one advantage we offer is you can actually add files to the meeting booking. So if you've got a meeting agenda or some documents that you want to share during the meeting, you can add those in Outlook. When you come into the meeting space, you can launch um, the meeting and access those files directly. And you can also distribute the files with the meeting attendees after the meeting. Okay, so web conferencing. So another poll, just to get some feedback from everyone. Okay, so it'd be really useful to know um, what types of web conferencing or traditional video conferencing tools you're, you're using at the moment. Okay, I'll stop it there. Okay. Okay, so I'll share these results with you. So, um, okay, not surprisingly, so we've got Microsoft Teams and Zoom uh, top in the leaderboard there. Um, certainly, if you, if you kind of look on social media over the last few months, the kind of level of activities on those platforms has, in, has increased a huge amount. Um, WebRTC and, and still quite a number using traditional H323 video conferencing at the bottom there. Um, our view generally is the use of H323 is decreasing. Um, I think web platforms such as Teams, Zoom um, and WebRTC are, are proving more and more popular uh, as they're more and more accessible to more users. Um, so that's interesting feedback. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so in terms of web conferencing support, so um, we support web conferencing on the main sign up, sign up core and sign up pure pro. Um, so you can configure a web RTC room, which could be something like Pexip or a Starleaf um, cloud service, for example, onto the unit um, and launch um, either directly within our mobile application or from a touchscreen display, for example. Um, at IOC 2020, we launched our support for Zoom, um, where you can take your personal Zoom uh, room account details and encrypt those within our mobile application um, and launch your own uh, private Zoom meeting directly on the sign up device. Um, Microsoft Teams, um, we support Teams currently through the Office 365 feature pack, um, which you can use and connect to a webcam directly to the sign up. Um, as part of our summer release, we'll be announcing some further integration with Microsoft Teams to mirror the functionality we offer now with Zoom and WebRTC. So I'll show you that functionality um, and that's what you can expect to see um, with Microsoft Teams as part of our summer release. Okay, so here's just a quick screenshot of our uh, vSolution app. Um, so currently you can use vSolution app to manage our sign up products and visualizers and you can detect them on your network and control the device. Um, here's a screenshot just showing our web conferencing support 
Um, so this is my application. Um, I can configure my own Zoom credentials. I can configure a separate WebRTC room. Um, and going forward from the summer, um, you also have Microsoft Teams supported within there. So the three main conferencing platforms and the option to jump into any of those um, meeting rooms virtually. Um, once your credentials are saved, they're encrypted and stored securely. Um, you can walk into a meeting space, um, connect to the sign up device in that room and with one button launch into that conference. Um, you also get meeting room controls within Zoom um, as you would within a browser. Um, and you can also choose to share content that you might be using on your sign up device. So if, for example, you're sharing a whiteboard um, and you're connecting an iPad through to sign up wirelessly, you can choose which display you share um, or within the control uh, function within our app. Fee Solution app is, is free to download if you're an existing sign up customer. Um, and I'd certainly recommend um, installing that and making sure it's up to date on the latest firmware version and experimenting with, with Zoom. Um, but as I say, Teams will be available uh, this summer um, and we're looking forward to releasing that. Okay, so moving on at the range to so sign up core, again, all the functionality that you get with um, the sign up Pure Pro. Um, in a slightly different form factor, you've got a dedicated Miracast um, areas, which you can see on the back of the unit there. Um, advanced networking options in terms of configuration and the sign up core forms a core part of our solution matrix, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, oops, okay, so this just briefly shows some of the connectivity op options. You've got a second uh, LAN connection, so more flexibility about how you configure it on the network. Um, one notable feature, so you can actually add in additional HDMI inputs um, into the uh, Pure Pro core and main sign up using our approved accessory from Magwell. Um, so if you need to generate more inputs or outputs, um, more inputs, sorry, you can do that. And this is our kind of flagship model. So this is the main sign up where it all began and a pro product that's been continually developed um, over the course of the last few years. Um, all of the functionality that's within sign up has filtered through to our other products. So there's a consistent user experience all the way through the product range. This means you can choose the right product for the right space based on your requirements um, and, and budget restrictions. Key features that our main sign up offers above the other product products so you can send and receive IP streams over the network. Um, it's got a built in um, HD recording functionality so you can record locally to the device. And I'll talk through some of those extra features now. So as you see, connectivity wise, it gets kept quite complicated with the sign up. You've got a lot of options. Um, so in its standard configuration, you've got two HDMI ins and two HDMI outs. So you can actually consolidate a lot of equipment that you might find in your traditional AV rack. Um, there's the option to purchase sign up um, with optional HD based T ins and outputs. Um, so if you've got a network TV solution, that's particularly useful. Um, again, you can add USB webcams if you're using web conferencing, um, IP streams from IP cameras um, for lecture capture. Um, everything is built into this box and it really is a kind of standalone solution within a meeting or teaching space. In terms of collaboration, it's got exactly the same functionality as the other products. So you can use all the native mirroring protocols, connect to network drives um, and manage them all through our central management platform. Okay, so again, like the, the sign up course, you've got the two uh, LAN connections, a separate Wi Fi connection uh, for advanced configuration. There's full documentation on our website um, in terms of our security policies, policies and certificates that are all available to download if you need to share those with your network teams. Okay, so some of the additional features that come with sign up. So, First one is local streaming. Um, so this is particularly useful, uh, for example, in a university environment where you need to stream a lecture for overflow purposes. So um, for example, at the beginning of term one, often universities over accrue in terms of student numbers. 
um, and you may need to overflow from one room to another to accommodate those extra students. Um, so you can use that local streaming functionality that's built into sign up um, for an RTP or an RTSP stream um, at 30 frames per second. Um, so that's very easy to configure um, either by the integrator or the, um, or the end user or the local kind of technical team on the ground managing the facility. Um, you can also uh, make your own annotations and recordings on the device you stream to. Okay, next up is webcasting. So this is an optional feature pack for the main sign up. Um, so we've seen a, an increase in, in the use of this over the last few months um, as lecturers are finding ways to deliver content to their students remotely. Um, with some professors coming into teaching spaces which are empty, uh, teaching a typical teaching session, but broadcasting that live uh, over the internet. So we can connect to Facebook Live, YouTube, and Wowza. Um, very clean integration they can the lecturer themselves can start that stream and stop that stream from within the teaching space so it's really just about extending the classroom additional options about how you broadcast that content equally it could be um, in a business a corporate setting um, within a boardroom uh, it could be a company address to a workforce and, and broadcasted live over the internet Okay, next up, so video recording on the main sign up. So um, since I joined Wolf Vision, um, I've obviously spent time with customers at different sites throughout the UK, and I've, sp I've spoken to my colleagues who represent Wolf Vision in other parts of the world. There's a real different uh, approach to how we record um, in those different regions. Um, some university customers, for example, outside of the UK record locally and store all their own recordings. Um, take them away and publish them themselves. Other save them to a cloud um, service uh, and access them that way. And others use um, a dedicated ledger capture platform, um, which is why SignUp works with all three of those options. Um, so it's extremely flexible. So a quick note on our lecture capture agent. So um, an optional feature pack for SignUp, which currently supports Panopto and Opencast. The big announcement really um, on this feature. So this summer we're going to be launching full support for Panopto scheduling. So that will mean you'll be able to insert a sign up device into your lectern uh, within the university lecture room, for example, connect it through to your Panopto cloud, which you could be running um, anyway. You could then use your Panopto cloud to schedule your recordings on sign up. Um, so if, for example, you're recording 50,000 lectures a year, um, doing that on an ad hoc recording basis can be challenging, um, whereas you might have a central timetabling team that are managing um, the scheduling of, of multiple lectures. Um, they'll be able to choose the, the sign-up device through the Panopto portal um, and push out the recording schedule to that device. Once it's recorded, it's published back to Panopto and the students would access the recording through either directly through Panopto or through their virtual learning environment. Um, we already offer scheduling for Opencast, which is available. Um, if you're using either of those platforms, um, I'd certainly recommend taking a look and in touch with us and we can explain um, that in more detail. But that's a really exciting feature for this summer. Okay. So next up is control. So um, I've done lots of demos over the past few months since joining Wolf Vision. Um, and this is one of the key areas where um, lots of customers aren't aware of what we can offer. Um, so we've, we've got a flexible um, control slide here, but we're just gonna delve a little deeper and explain what that actually means. Um, but before we do that, what would be really useful, so if there's any existing sign up customers out there, um, we could just run a quick poll. So if you could just tell us how um, you're controlling your sign-up devices at the moment. So you can, it's multiple choice. So if, if you're using more than one um, method, then please select that. It's just interesting to see how you're controlling them at the moment.
Okay. Okay, so I'll share those results. So, okay, so top of the leaderboard for this poll. So, uh, room control system, so Equestron, Extron, or AMX, for example, um, controlling your sign up devices. That's, that's really encouraging to see. Um, we've got up to date libraries on our website for those customers that haven't seen this yet. So, you can download those and, and start controlling your sign up devices. Also, got quite a good number of people are using a wireless keyboard and mouse so that's a simple way um, to connect to the device and control it um 23 using the remote control which is interesting as well um 38 using a touchscreen display um which is, is is one of my preferred methods i think that adds a lot um also the web browser um and a 10 using the wolf vision api okay Okay, so just to summarize in terms of control. Um, so this could be any sign up product at the center of this kind of diagram here. Um, but I'll just briefly talk through what, what we can offer. So um, remote control, which is which comes included with some of our sign up devices, obviously you can control via that, that isn't shown on this diagram. Um, I'll start with a touch screen. So if you've got um, any USB touch screen display, you can connect that direct, directly to the sign up device. Um, that allows you to control the device, it allows you to use the annotation, whiteboarding features, um, and it really is just a standalone solution. So there's no third party controller required to offer that level of functionality. It's pretty much plug and, and play. Um, in addition, you've got the option to use a HTML5 browser, which I'll be using in a few slides time when I'm demonstrating the vSolution matrix. Many of you are already using um, touchscreen displays from AMX, Crestron, and Extron. Um, you've also got the ability to send commands directly from the sign-up itself. So, for example, if you had a display or a projector that supported PJ Link, then you could issue a command directly from the sign-up um, as a peripheral command. So if you simply need to turn on a projector or screen in a room when you start a session, then you don't need a third-party controller at all. Um, our API guide and um, integration guides cover how to configure those controls and they're added to the main menu bar within sign up. Um, you can also connect a visualizer, so via USB. Um, that not only shares the video with the sign up, but also the control. So if you've got a touch screen, a sign up and a visualizer example, you can pinch and zoom on the touch screen to control the visualizer. So again, removing the need for third party control in a simple installation. Um, and then lastly, we've got our sign up API developers guide. So some of the view I see from the poll are using that. If you haven't read that, I'd recommend you, you read the document. It's, it's really interesting about different ways you can control sign up. So this could be using the completely um, bespoke control solution um, to control sign up. Uh, I've heard different stories about how that's been used and um, hopefully that's something we'll share with you in future webinars. And lastly, in terms of control, we've got vSolution app. So it's a completely free download. So if you're an existing customer now, please download um, to your device and, and experiment. Um, so as I explained earlier, you can use this app to launch your Zoom and WebRTC meetings and going forward, uh, Microsoft Teams. You can also monitor your devices and control them. Um, so you can walk into a room, select your device, launch into the browser view, and then you've got full control um, by the touch on your iPad. Okay. And then lastly, we've got our remote management tool. So once again, this is a completely free download. Um, it was released uh, the middle part of last year um, as a replacement for uh, our old vSolution link, which is still used for some of our legacy devices. Um, this can be installed locally on a Windows 10 laptop, for example, or you can run it on a virtual machine and give access to multiple um, technicians within a large organization, for example. Uh, also useful for any AV integrators that uh, have joined us today. So if you're configuring a large number of sign-up devices prior to install, you can configure base settings, get those approved with your customers, um, roll those out to multiple devices in the workshop uh, or prior to the lectern build, for example. Um, 
and just save any commissioning time and, and install time. It also makes sure that the, the customers get a consistent user experience with how the devices are configured. So any um, network settings that need to be applied, any background images, they can all be captured within the uh, settings templates. So the, yeah, this just lists some of the functionality it offers. Um, it's worth noting as well, so it also supports our, our visualizer family as well. So if you've got a room with sign up and visualizer within the same space, it will detect both devices and you can manage them within the same platform. Um, so again, if you've got visualizers, um, please download and, and take a look. Okay, so very briefly, so we've got detailed security documents on our website, so I won't, I won't go into a great de a detail. Um, but it's worth mentioning, um, security is something that we take very seriously. Um, all our sign up family is um, configured uh, on Linux. Um, and some of the key kind of features here. Um, So our, our, our Linux build is completely custom and developed in-house by the Warfusion uh, development team. Um, it's safe, it's secure, um, and we complete regular penetration tests both internally and from external providers uh, to prove this. And again, we've got detailed documents if any of your network teams or customers need to see that information. Okay, so that was a summary of our sign up family. And this is really just a broad overview in this webinar. Over the coming weeks, we'll focus more on particular topics. But now I'd like to talk to you about the solution matrix. Um, so this is a product that was launched two years ago um, as a dedicated active learning uh, solution uh, for universities um, and colleges, for example. Over the last two years, the product's developed significantly and we've added additional functionality. Um, some of you may already be using Resolution Matrix. I'm just gonna give a very brief overview of some of those features. Um, and then talk about how it's been used in different environments outside of education. So very simply put, so what is Resolution Matrix? So it's our networked AV solution. Um, so you can take one sign up call, add the Resolution Matrix feature pack, and then you can connect up to 40 sign up call devices um, over the network. So a, a simple gigabit switch in between uh, all these devices allows them to talk to each other and then um, the user can actually share content over the network. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to log into my demo setup here at home um, and just show you what that looks like. Okay. Okay, so you should all be seeing the web interface of the main sign-up unit, um, which is here in my home office. So I'm just gonna talk through um, B-Solution Matrix and what it all means. Um, so here you can see this is the HTML5 view of a sign-up, which um, obviously, like I explained, allows you to kind of launch um, any content um, that you like. So that's really handy, whether that's an iPad or whether that's through a browser, that's really useful if you're not using that. I encourage you to experiment with that. Um, over here on the left-hand side of the screen is the is the matrix tab. Um, we'll delve into that in a second about what that looks like. But I just want to take you very quickly um, into the configuration just to show you how simple it is to configure a matrix. Okay, so this is the uh, matrix configuration tool. So you simply log into the uh, admin interface of the main sign up unit um, and you can set up to five configuration templates. Um, so this is particularly useful if you've got a flexible space, maybe with mobile furniture or mobile screens or a partition wall that is removed for some teaching activities and, and put in place for others, for example. So you can switch between those templates um, and the end user can switch those from the control interface. So in terms of how you configure a matrix, um, so as I explained earlier, you connect all your devices onto a gigabit switch or onto your network, um, and then all your devices will appear here on the left-hand side. 
in the center of the screen, um, this orange section here represents the presenter. So this is the main sign up. Um, I've got two sign up calls on the network. I've named them group one and group two. Um, I can choose how they appear on the matrix uh, template. So if it's circular tables or rectangular tables, I can choose between the two. Um, so let's go straight in and just configure the matrix. So I'll choose a square or rectangular table for group one and drop that into position. Um, I can also color code uh, these lines here to represent the group. So it could be the, the blue group, the green group. Um, some customers are naming them by country, which is quite interesting. Um, so I can change the colors. I can resize these to represent the room. Um, so users can orientate themselves. And then I'll take group two and just drag that into position as well. So very simply, this is a, a two workstation matrix solution. We've got the presenter in the middle um, and we've got the, the two groups in position. So what I'll show you now is just a slightly different configuration. So, so this is taking the, the same concept. So groups one, groups two. All I've done here is I've just applied a JPEG background. Uh, I've taken a floor plan from a, an existing teaching space and I've taken blocks which represent the furniture. Um, so you can choose just to have a completely blank background. So it's a very clean interface or you can bring in an image to represent the teaching space. So this is particularly useful if you've got a lecturer or professor that's um, maybe nervous about using an active learning room for the first time. This helps them orientate themselves within the space. They can see the doors, the windows, where the furniture's positioned. Um, then the, uh, the matrix workstations uh, are in position. So we'll exit the configurator now. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're back to the, the main sign up. So this could be installed um, at the lectern position or um, on a mobile trolley within the room, for example. And I select the tab on the left hand side. So I just launch into. Let's launch a new presentation. Okay, so I choose the, the matrix template. So like I explained, if you've, if you've got a partition wall that's open for certain hours during teaching, you could choose the, the matrix template that represents that furniture configuration. That could also be triggered by um, a partition wall with a contact closure fed through to your control system um, and fully automated from a, a Crestron control system, for example. Um, so here's the, the matrix that we've configured, groups one and groups two, and our presenter station represented by the lectern here at the bottom. So some of the very simple features, and I won't go through everything because I think we're hoping to run a dedicated vSolution matrix webinar later, um, but very quickly, some of the key things that we can offer. So first of all is you can view what's happening on all the screens. So here the presenter station could be connected to a projector at the front of the room. Um, this is what everyone can see in the room. We've got group one, they're sharing an iPad, <coughs> excuse me, um, with a whiteboard. And obviously that's a live feed as I squiggle um, on my whiteboard here. Group two don't appear to be working on anything at the moment. Um, what I use particularly like about this is that it gives presenters the confidence to see what's happening in the room. So not only to make sure that the students are working on the activity that's been set, um, but also to check um, they understand what's been given to them in terms of the task. Um, the presenter can look from the presenter station into any of these to see what's happening. They can also do it in a bit more detail um, so they can press and hold over each workstation. Um, so this means they, they don't need to intrude on what the group are doing. Um, on a given activity, it may be they, they check in, they think what they're doing is, is completely correct and they're doing a great job, so they don't want to disturb them. But they might want to focus on group two and wonder why they haven't started presenting wirelessly or annotating on any content. 
in terms of sharing, so you can click the main presenter station. Um, very simply, you can push your content, content out to all screens. I can now look and see that each workstation is receiving what I, I've just sent them um, from my workstation. Another useful feature, so you can actually link groups together. So if you've got a large active learning space and you could have up to 40 of these tables, um, you could link certain groups together to, to work collaboratively on an activity. So if I drag and drop between the workstations, um, now you should be able to see um, that group one is sharing their content with group two and they're working collaboratively. So it gets quite powerful, certainly as the number of tables increase, you might want to split the room up into the left-hand side of the room and the right-hand side of the room, for example, um, just to make this session more interesting. Okay, so the last thing I just want to show, so as well as sending, receiving content and distributing it to the workstations, uh, which is, is extremely popular, each workstation is completely independent. So, um, Outside of teaching hours, group one, or a student could walk into the, the classroom, they could sit at the group one table, they could wirelessly present, um, they could do a video conference uh, through Zoom, uh, they could collaborate with um, other students. They could also invite other groups um, to collaborate with them. So for social learning or revision or study purposes, um, it allows the room to be used flexibly outside of the core teaching hours. Um, so it maximizes the return on investment um, and these spaces, <coughs> excuse me, are proven to be extremely popular with students, both inside teaching hours and outside. So the other thing that is particularly useful, so you can also share files with these stations. So for a group activity, um, the uh, lecturer or presenter may want to pre-prepare pre some content. Um, so it could be an activity or a task. They maybe don't want to do that live in the room, so they produce a PowerPoint slide or a PDF document, a Word document, for example. Um, they have they bring those with a memory stick or save them to the cloud device, um, storage device, um, and they want to push that content out. So, for example, I've got a USB stick connected here. So, let's say, for example, the presenter in this room is leading a session um, about the Myers-Briggs type indicator test, and he's explaining about different personality traits within the workplace. Um, so the presenter could be working on a presentation, which all the students watch. Um, as the session progresses, he might want to send group one um, a sample test activity. So I can press and hold and I can see that the students are still collaborating and working, sharing to the screen, but I've now shared um, a test document as a sample exercise. So group two as part of the same activity, <clears throat> they're probably given a slightly different task. So um, we could share an image with that group. Sorry. Okay, so um, so group two are, are given a bit of a fun exercise about Star Wars characters and how that relates to different personality types, um, and they're, they're given a task to identify themselves. So at all times, the presenter can see exactly what each group are working on, and that's completely live. So as you can see from group one. Um, as I'm making some annotations here, that stream straight live through to the presenter. Um, so it's really dynamic content sharing um, and it goes beyond just streaming video and audio to the workstations. And it also allows lecturers to prepare in advance. So if you've got a large active learning classroom with potentially 100 students spread across 40 tables, um, then it may be that some pre-works required um, and by configuring these um, task files, then the presenter can distribute those. Okay, so that's the solution matrix. I'll just switch back to the presentation. Okay. 
So very briefly, so user interface, so you, you can have a JPEG background image, as I demonstrated, uh, which could represent the, the floor plan of the room, um, or it could just be completely clean with no background at all. Um, file sharing is a full list of documents that we support uh, through Blue Solution Matrix. Again, this is a real unique feature to Wolf Vision, um, and certainly kind of urge you to take a look at that. Uh, we support up to 40 workstations. Um, so here's a, a picture from um, an installation at the Linda Business School. Um, again, those uh, 40 workstations could be 40 tables, like I, I showed a, a few slides ago. They could also be supplementary screens throughout the space. Um, so there's many ways to configure it. Show all screens with a single um, press of a button. Um, that's a really popular feature. Um, and these are the two modes that I've briefly described in the demo. So coaching mode is that you can link different workstations together so they can work on a shared activity. Um, group work mode allows students to come into the space um, outside of teaching hours um, and collaborate with each other. It doesn't need to be driven by the main presenter and they've got the ability to take control. When the teaching session um, starts, the presenter can come into the space and take control back uh, of the matrix. Um, but this really means that you're not limited to the core teaching hours, which could be eight to 10 hours a day. It means at set points in the year, um, these spaces could be really popular for revision purposes or group study work. Um, and it allows you to transfer the matrix into that uh, type of space um, without any additional configuration. Quick slide on remote collaboration. So we've got um, a matrix installation here um, in the image um, with 40 workstations. Now, as each of those 40 stations is completely independent and people can connect, collaborate, and use all the features and sign up, then you could also bring in remote participants through Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and WebRTC. So that really allows you to extend the classroom. Um, you could bring in remote speakers to present to an active learning group, for example. Um, so it becomes quite powerful. Um, it's worth kind of thinking about different ideas about how you'd implement that into teaching. Also, Panopto I mentioned, so you could record the active learning session from the main sign-up station, publish that directly to Panopto or Opencast, or record it locally um, and distribute it to a, a cloud service or an FTP server. So in terms of the original design for the solution matrix, so first and foremost, it was designed as an active learning solution. Um, we've got over 250 customers worldwide that have implemented it now. Um, the development team have learned an awful lot from those customers and added new features uh, over the past two years. Um, what we've discovered as a company is that um, the key features or attributes that people like for active learning spaces, you know, ease of use, ease of configuration, ease of management, these are extremely popular in other sectors. Um, so we're just gonna take a quick look at some examples of other projects where vSolution Matrix has been deployed outside of education. So here's an example of a, an IT training facility um, using a mixture of fixed and mobile um, AV within a space. Um, but again, just like a higher education example, um, it's, it's moving content tasks um, around the space. So this is more kind of commercial training facility rather than a traditional higher education environment. But the big um, sector for us is medical and healthcare. So both in terms of universities where they're training medical students, but also medical facilities. Um, so here uh, we've got a dentistry example uh, where there's training stations. Um, each of those screens represents um, a sign-up call um, and content is distributed uh, around the space. Uh, and the other huge growth area for, for us as a company is the court and legal sector. Um, I won't say too much about that because my colleague Damien will be running some dedicated webinars um, on that sector in the coming weeks and I'll, I'll provide further details in a few slides time on those. Uh, the other interesting use case is training and on, online assessment. So there's a huge increase in these types of spaces, both within education and corporate facilities um, where courses needed need to be completed online and accreditation needs to be completed online. 
So we've got an example here where um, the sign up is streaming content locally out to each of the workstations, also distributing content out to multiple screens. Um, so it just demonstrates the different ways that you can apply the matrix. Um, like I say, it was designed as an active learning solution, but we've actually learned that it's a really flexible platform. And it's interesting to see how our, the consultants, integrators and customers we work with um, are finding different ways to use it. As the product develops um, and the different um, use cases emerge, we're seeing like different types of furniture. So um, could be collaborative pods, technical furniture, wall mounted screens versus integrated into furniture or completely mobile solutions. So you could have a pop-up active learning space, for example, where you have uh, 40 mobile units that are wheeled into a space. So the space doesn't need to be dedicated to active learning for the whole year. Um, or you could have a combination of fixed um, and mobile furniture like we're showing here. So in this example, we've got the, the lecture, lecture uh, here in the middle um, with a, a mobile touchscreen connected to the main sign app. Um, the professor is pushing content out to each of the workstations. And in this case, there's removable tables with mobile uh, screens and a mixture of collaborative pods. So this is particularly interesting where students um, are increasingly uh, choosing the way they learn, so the type of environment they choose to study or work in. So where you've got a hybrid space, it allows the student to maybe choose a semi-enclosed collaborative pod to work in versus a more open plan area. Um, again, from a technology perspective, it's very simple for us to integrate matrix into any of those environments. Okay, so lastly, this is, this is the sign up family. Um, today was really just an overview of all the products um, and touch briefly on B Solution Matrix. Um, we've got lots of detailed information uh, on our website. Um, we've also got a YouTube channel which um, goes into more detail about some of the matrix features. Um, so please take a look at that. Okay, so lastly, the other kind of big announcement for today, which I'm particularly pleased to announce, um, the team in Austria have been working very hard over the last few months to develop a new customer training and accreditation program which we're going to be launching next week. So we already offer um, an accreditation program for our um, AB integrator partners to ensure that uh, they have the necessary skills to configure and install our technology. Um, we decided to open this up to um, our customers um, and certainly over the past few months there's, a, there's been a huge increase in demand for online content. Um, so I'm pleased to say that um, the work has been done and we're hoping to announce that early next week. This will mean customers will be able to log into our new uh, portal, gain accreditation and a certificate for the um, test they complete, learn more about our technology. So this is a, a really interesting thing and um, hopefully many of you will find it useful. Okay, I'm just gonna pause there. I'll just hand back to Julian. Hi, John. Hi, Julian. Very good. Well, John, um, thank, thank you very much for the uh, very interesting insight into the sign up range. Um, I hope all the attendees found it useful and informative. Um, and I've been busy um, answering uh, lots of different questions from delegates. So thank you for sending those through. Um, I just wanted to run through a few of the most common questions asked uh, with you, John. So. The first one that uh, uh, is uh, worth uh, discussing is, so what do we actually need to build a B-Solution Matrix setup? Um, let's assume there may be six student workstations and a presenter station in the room. Okay, um, so simply put, so at the heart of all Matrix installations um, is a single sign-up unit. So you need a sign-up unit um, and the optional B-Solution Matrix feature pack. Um, you can then add, um, in, in your example, six sign-up cores to the installation, but actually up to 40 sign-up cores to that installation. There's no yeah. requirement for a feature pack to be added or purchased for the sign-up cores. So it's a single license to the main sign-up, and that drives the matrix. Um, so single sign-up core, six sign-up cores, um, and the B-Solution uh, matrix feature pack, obviously connected to your local network or a gigabit network switch, um, and then any AV that you want to bolt on top of that in terms of touch screens and so on. 
so we can support large collaborative projects. Um, you mentioned we can uh, we can actually go up to forty stations in the room, can't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and those forty stations, like I said uh, in the presentation, could be could be a mixture of fixed mobile furniture. There could be screens mounted at ceiling level. Um, it could be overflow screens into yep. net room rooms. Um, it's not restricted to the physical room. It can, you know, um, bleed into other spaces as well because it's, that's the joy of using a network TV solution. And what content, John, can we can we share? What file content can we share during a vSolution Matrix presentation? Um, so yeah, so obviously there's the ability to um, push and pull content as a video stream between the stations, which is really useful. Um, key element in terms of the setting tasks for the different groups is actually distributed files. So that could be from a USB pen drive, a cloud service, or locally on the, the sign up device itself. So the, uh, we are recording this webinar. So there is a full list of the supported file types that we can distribute through the matrix. Um, and there's also further details on the website, but it's certainly good to have the option to push physical file content as well as video streams. Absolutely, yeah. And the second question that's been commonly asked is, do, do we have a particular buying model for the sign-up range? Uh, okay, yeah, so in terms of purchasing options, um, so as with our visualizer family, so it's, it's an upfront uh, single capital cost. There isn't any licenses applied to the hardware. Uh, as I mentioned, our vSolution app for control and launching web conferencing meetings is free to download. Um, B Solution Link Pro, our management tool, again, is free to download. Um, so it really is just that upfront cost. Um, one thing that's, that's worth pointing out is um, if you bought an original sign up a few years ago, for example, um, if you update the latest firmware, you've now got access to um, Zoom integration and WebRTC support, which you may not have had when the product launched. Um, that's a completely free upgrade uh, for existing customers. Yeah. So we don't have an annual license and uh, all our firmware updates are, are free of charge, aren't they? Yeah, no, no limit on the number of users. No, exactly. Yeah. And then um, we've also had uh, quite a bit of interest in the main sign up as a complete room based solution. Um, can you just run over again the sort of the inputs and outputs of the device? Um, yeah, so I won't, I won't go through every input and output no. that's in the webinar. I think the key in its, its standard form, um, sign up comes with two HDMI ins, two HDMI outs. You've got multiple um, USB connections. You've got the ability to send and receive streams over the network. So that can increase the numbers of, of inputs and outputs potentially. Um, we can also supply the main sign up with optional HD base T inputs and outputs. Yeah. Um, you can add HDMI inputs using our um, Magwell um, accessory. So that'll generate an extra HDMI input into the device. So you can actually consolidate quite a lot of the hardware you'd have in a mm. traditional AV stack. I suppose also, John, we could use one of the HDMI ins, uh, connect that to a small touch screen, and then that can be used as a, as a room management system, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly what I've learned since joining Wolf Vision is um, different customers around the world are, are kind of using the product in different ways. So um, a very cost effective way um, to deliver a room system is connect a, a simple touchscreen display through to the sign up and that could be connected through to a projector and then you're doing all your control um, through a low cost touchscreen. Um, sure. If you use the peripheral command uh, functionality you can actually send additional commands to other devices on the network. Yeah that's great well just I'm conscious of time so I've just got two other uh, questions that were frequently asked um, that I'm just going to answer now. So um, do we offer any network integration support with the sign up range? Um, absolutely. Uh, if you Google uh, Wolf Vision network integration, um, you'll find our information, our integration guides um, to do with the whole range. Uh, so it's full of uh, very important information. We also have an IT consultancy team um, at our head office to uh, assist with network, network configuration. Um, you know, ultimately, we want you. Uh, we want to help you connect, sign up in a secure and stable way, and that works how you want it to work on your network. So, uh, so absolutely, uh, we uh, we're passionate about supporting you uh, with the uh, the network configuration. And then the other question that was asked was about um, when you wirelessly connect to sign up, how can you control the wireless traffic in that room? So. 
Um, you can either pin project um, AirPlay and Miracast. Um, uh, so people can only um, connect with a, with a prescribed pin. But in addition, and unique to uh, the sign up range, is that you can also um, select protected mode in the settings. So this means that the, uh, the presenter will um, activate protected mode and um, that particular user who he wants to engage with, he or she wants to engage with, um, they have 10 or 15 seconds to connect. Once they've connected, then the, uh, the whole system is locked down again. So uh, no one will be able to connect again, um, whatever, whatever device, a laptop, um, a phone or a, um, a tablet uh, in, in that room unless the uh, presenter um, activates a protected mode again. So uh, that really does lock, lock down um, the wireless traffic and ensures that no one can connect either inside the room or outside the room. So I think that's pretty much it, John, um, on, on the questions. They were the main ones that... that, okay. um, that um, okay, you know, so we, we, will, um, we will take an extract of the, the question. So if there's any that we, we haven't been able to answer, we can follow those up via email afterwards. And Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Julian. That's great. Okay, so I'll just bring the webinar to a close. Um, so again, thanks for joining our first webinar. It's great to see so many of you uh, join us. Um, in terms of upcoming webinars, we've got um, a few uh, planned for the next few weeks. Um, you can find details of these on our website. Um, if you go to wallfishing.com, click on the events tab at the top of uh, the homepage and you can see a full list of the upcoming webinars. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, so Damien, my colleague in the US, will be delivering two webinars on uh, the courtroom sector. Um, um, a separate webinar will be held next Thursday on using visualizers for distance learning and web meetings. Um, and we're keen to run more webinars going forward. So if you've got any ideas about content that you'd like to see, or if you'd like to see us focus on a particular product or solution, then we're happy to do so. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, Thank you. We hope to see you again um, and stay safe. Yeah, goodbye.